morning, good morning to everybody out there in our social world and everybody in the sanctuary. It is good to be in the house of the Lord today. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. And those who are watching us, thank you so much for joining us on today. You know, it's always good to be in the land of the living and we cannot take it for granted. And so we thank God on this day that you decided to join with us on today. You could, have been, you could be anywhere else looking at anybody else on your cell phone or on your TV while you're sitting there or while you're driving. Hopefully you're not driving and looking at this and you're listening to it. But those who are in the sanctuary, once again, it's an honor to see you today. So we want to go to the Lord in prayer. If we can stand to our feet, those of you in the sanctuary, let's just honor our Lord and Savior for being such a great God. If you can, bow your heads. Lord, we thank you today. God, we come to you just asking you first and foremost to forgive us of our sins. God, I pray right now that as you forgive us of our sins, help us to forgive Help us to forgive ourselves of what we may have done. Because sometimes, God, you can forgive us, but we don't forgive ourselves, God. And we don't want that torment to stop our praise, to hinder our worship. We want to move freely in you. So we come boldly to your throne of grace now, asking God that you receive our praise, that you receive our worship. And as we get ready to encounter you in this time where we get to lift our hands and exalt you and extol you and, um, and, and just tell you how great you are. We want you to come on and get in the midst, God. You say where there's two or three gathered, you will be right there. So God, we thank you for what you're gonna release in this house. We thank you for the healing. We thank you for the peace. We thank you for joy. We thank you for the love. We thank you, Father God, for whatever you're going to release in this place. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, Father God, that is here amongst us now to help us, Father God, in this time and to be in this service so that somebody leave here changed. It is honor. We give you honor. We give you glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now in the hands of the praise team. Somebody just give God glory right there. Somebody give God praise right there. Is there anybody excited about being in the house of the Lord one more time? There's a song of the old, and they used to say, I'm glad to be in the service one more time. And for that, we give God glory. Hallelujah. More than enough for us, oh God. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. I wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I can do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Say, Jaira, Jaira, you are enough. Jaira, Jaira, you are enough. And I will be content in every circumstance. And Jaira, you are enough. a storm, but I won't go down. I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind to call me out. You would cross an ocean so I wouldn't drown. You've never been closer than you are right now. Say, Jaira. Jaira. Circumstance, I will be, and I will be. 
I just want to say thank you. You get the glory. You get the glory. You get the praise. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say. I've been
touch every body. He's here to touch every mind. He's here to touch every soul. And even in your home, he is there with you. The presence of the Lord is here. And will you allow him to work on you? Will you allow him to heal you? Will you allow him to make you whole? In his presence, there is healing. In his presence, there is deliverance. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. In his presence, God can touch you. Well, the Spirit of the Lord is here. And he has come to set the captive free. Somebody give God glory as he works on us as we are in his presence. Hallelujah. I said somebody give God glory. Hallelujah. 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 I hope y'all can hear me. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as they were singing that, in Psalm 100, shout with joy to the Lord. And here is who he sent. Watch this. All the earth. Worship the Lord. And here is what you should worship the Lord with. Gladness. It is. I'm looking for some word lovers in here. Come before him. This is how you come before him. Singing with joy. The Bible says, acknowledge that the Lord is God. Somebody say, he is God. He is what he did. He made us. Uh, watch this. And we are his. We are his people. Somebody say, I'm a part of that. The sheep of his pasture. Somebody say, the sheep of his pasture. Now, he does say this, and it goes on, and this is where I get happy. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. I said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. I said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And watch this. Go into his courts with praise. Is there anybody in here that got a praise for God today? Is there anybody in here that can tell God thank you right now? Is there any, I ain't got nobody talking to me. Is there anybody that just, just want to tell God thank you? Come on, tell God thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 I heard that hallelujah is the highest praise. So I tell you somebody just to say hallelujah. If we're going to give it to him, let's just give it to him. Hallelujah. God, I thank you in advance. I thank you in advance. I give you praise in advance. I shabak you in advance. I lift you up in advance. Hallelujah. I don't wait till the battle is over. I'm going to shout now. Hallelujah. 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 He is worthy. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and just point to him and say, you know he's worthy. Go ahead and tell him, you know he's worthy. Yeah, he's worthy of all the praise. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. I just want to say thank you. Veronica, grab that mic real quick. And I want to, don't play no drums to this. I just, I need to, 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 
I want to make sure we get that. If you can just with the strings, um, sing, sing, sing that just a little bit more. We give you glory. You get the glory. That's it. You get the praise. Yeah. You take the honor. I just want to say thanks. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say you get the glory and you get the praise. This is a little old school. I, I'm where my old school is at. This this is some old school stuff. Let's go, Veronica. Just just it's just simple. It's simple, y'all. It's simple. Without the drum, don't worry about it. Come on, come on. With our voices, come on. Let us all sing. Come on. So good, come on, Veronica. Oh, You've been so good. Come on. Yeah. You been, yes, you have said you been oh so good. When I look back over my life and I see all the ways you made bad, yes, you have so Another one. Lord. Veronica, some people say he made a way. Let me hear. He made, made a way just for you and for me. How many of you can testify? He made a way. I can get somebody to wave your hands. Come on. Come on. Come on. just want you to hold, if you can, hold your hands up. I just want you to begin to just start thanking God right now. Come on. I'm going to let y'all sit down. But sometimes we need a moment just to tell God thank you out of you keep on 
taken away. Travis Green say something like this, I don't know how, but you did it. Don't just tell them thank you. Thank you, God, for forgiving me. Thank you, God, for your blood covering me. Thank you, God, for the angels that are tied to my name and my address and the angels that are fighting on my behalf when I'm weary and I'm wounded and I'm sad. God, you thank you. Don't sing it, Pringle. Come on now, Anthony. Sometimes the spirit just jump on for come on now. That's it, Anthony. That's it. That's it. Can anybody else testify and say to those words? Come on. anybody's testimony. singing that. I want you to go hug somebody while the music is going. Come on, go and hug somebody. Tell them I'm glad you're here. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. You may have your seats. You may have your seats. Listen, um, I want to share some announcements with you really quick. 
uh, want to make sure that I start off with this one. Um, the Wings of Faith, this Thursday at 11 a.m. Uh, this, this, uh, the Wings of Faith, we're meeting this Thursday at 11 a.m. A A.M. 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 All right, 11 a.m. Mr. Charles, make sure uh, she's okay getting into her seat. Amen. The Wings of Faith, once again, this Thursday at 11 a.m. All right, so if you're 55 and older, join the Wings of Faith um, this, this Thursday um, at 11 a.m. Also, um, be reminded that tomorrow um, I'm asking all the, um, if you uh, sing on the praise team, um, sound ministry, um, um, musicians, if they can make it, uh, 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 Sister Christian has already sent that message out. We're trying to meet on tomorrow just to try to go over some things. So if you can be here for that, that will be great. All right, so that we can um, move forward in vision. So that's tomorrow, uh, tomorrow at 6 p.m., I believe, 6 p.m. Amen. Also, uh, don't forget that I do need some help. October uh, uh, 30th, October 30th, I believe, or 29th, October 29th, we have our pink Sunday, our pink Sunday. All right. So everybody wear pink. Look at your neighbor and say wear pink. All right. I know, fellas, we got a pink shirt, got something. This is in honor of breast cancer awareness. Amen. Amen. Do anybody have anybody uh, lost a loved one or know somebody with breast cancer? Amen. So we want to be there for those uh, those those loved ones. Um, um, I know I think I have my auntie. I believe my auntie um, is a breast cancer survivor. And so I know that we used to have uh, it was a couple of people. And one of them in, um, that I do remember, Miss Mary Machant. Um, and I believe it was somebody else. I can't remember the name. Um, of those who are breast cancer survivors. We want to honor them. We also want to support um, 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 any organizations. I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to support anybody that's doing something, whether it's a walk. Let's show them that uh, we care about them and that we support uh, the efforts that are going um, that route. Also, on October the 25th, October the 25th, I've asked if you can join me if you got time. We have partnered with Molly Ray, and um, we are doing their, uh, their kind of like their fall festival. And so um, I have created trunk or treat um, um, programs and all kind of stuff for probably like three or four different schools. Um, but what we did was this year we're only partnering with Molly Ray. The other schools, I let them take the, the whole plan, and they're doing it at their school. And so this particular time, we're going to do it on the 25th. All I need is volunteers to help serve food, all right, help serve food. That's all we're doing. We're standing behind the tables, and the kids are going to be out there. It's going to be different games. This is going to be fun, music. Families are going to be out there. This is our way of showing the families that Pine Hills Community Church is still in the community. There is a sign-up sheet out in the foyer that you can sign up. Um, and there's a flyer as well speaking about that. So we are working closely with Molly Ray, and I thank um, thank um, Mr. Uh, Nate Stevens, who's the principal at Molly Ray Elementary, that's allowing this to go forth. And so we're working together um, to do great things. Amen? Amen. Also, um, that's coming up. I'm, I feel like there's something else that I did want to mention. And then I know we have Get With Dr. Fleeton um, and Brotherhood. They're coming together. We're getting ready to uh, prepare for the Christmas time, and one of the things that we wanted to do, if anybody knows Sister Willis, um, she's at a facility that takes care of her. Her husband is in here, Sergeant Willis, but we're going to be going to that facility, and we're giving her floor socks and toothpaste and different items like that out there. So you can get more information um, um, at the table. We got a bin that you can put this stuff in. So when you're going to Family Dollar or the grocery store or whatever you're going to, think about that, all right, because we are going to go there in December and we're going to go and pass out some items. Um, and one of the reasons is because one of our members is there. Somebody say amen. Amen. And so we want to support her. She's definitely always praying for our church. Anybody that knows Sister Willis, she is a prayer warrior. And I don't I be I tell her you got an anointing for surviving. 
She keep fighting. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. And so uh, I love her spirit. I love what she brings uh, to the table. And so we want to support her as well. Also, I want to tell you any seniors, um, there's information that's going to be going out with our seniors. If you know anybody that deal with uh, Alzheimer's um, or dementia, um, Experienced Christian Center, Bishop Derek McRae, his church is going to be coming over to Pine Hill Community Church on November 4th and the 11th, all right? And I believe it's going to be at 9.30 or 10 o'clock um, on that day. You'll be getting more information about that. If you know anybody that maybe they're handling somebody with Alzheimer's or dementia or is coming up, okay, we want to have them here joining other seniors. We know that their seniors are coming. Um, Miss Betty is inviting the Wings of Faith. You will have to register um, to get more information. This will be on November 4th and November 11th, all right? And so we want you to be here to get as much information as possible so that you can serve your friends or your family. The other thing, and this is the last announcement um, that we're doing, we in November, we're having what we call Thankful Sunday. Thankful Sundays. This is an opportunity where you can come in and tell somebody thank you. We're going to do at least two to three people each Sunday morning where you'll get up and you'll have a minute or so to be able to express yourself to somebody in the sanctuary that maybe you just want to say, I thank you for this or I thank you for whatever. All right. November is a month of thanks. So we want to be thankful. Somebody say amen. Amen. We, I believe that once you start praising God, minds start lifting. Once you start encouraging people, things start shifting. And somebody just need a, a word of encouragement. Somebody just need to know that what you're doing is not in vain. We see it, we recognize it, and we thank you for your commitment, your consistency, and we thank you for your love. Some of you did some stuff that you didn't even know somebody was watching. All right? People remember not so much of what you say, but they remember what you do. Amen. And so we want to definitely, definitely uh, uh, be in support of that. So we do have some people who are signing up um, for that. So we want our Sundays to be filled with thanks. Amen. 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 I'm going to get out the way. I'm not going to be preaching on today, but I know a good guy, a great guy that I call and say, don't you hold your head down. Amen. If y'all can give me, Brian, you give me some soft music, some stream music. Um, I, I can't wait to November. I need him to know this. Um, since I come here, I got certain folk that have literally been right on my hip. When I, when I do wrong, Sergeant Willis, when I do right, this is one of the ones uh, that helped me get it together. Just to give me wisdom. And he always say, Pastor Miles, you know I never was a pastor. But I do tell him this. It sure seemed like it. And maybe it was another time or something. But there's a wisdom that he has that helps me navigate seasons. And so I was telling somebody at our, as I was riding here, I said, this guy who's preaching today, he's on Strangers High Church. Y'all know who he is. He helps me with Bible study. We talk almost probably two to three times a week. We sit on the phone. We laugh. He has the most corniest jokes I've ever heard in my life. He love some, what is it, loney sandwiches. But it's nothing like when you can just stop and he say, Pastor, before you get off the phone, let me pray with you real quick. And it'd be moments like that. I got fathers. Don't get me wrong. I got my spiritual father, Bishop John Guns in Jacksonville. I got my dad. Mr. Lee, who's here. I got some other mentors. But this guy right here, I would consider, he is right up there. We've grown 
help me, and I need him to know how special he is to me. He don't never know how special he is to me to help me manage and navigate. Y'all know every now and then your pastor get a little depressed or get down a little bit, right? Why y'all quiet? We all human. Sometimes God will send you a person just to be right beside you say, okay, now get up. Let's keep it moving. You need people like that in your corner just to say, you can do it. So I ask this great young man that love loney sandwiches that got all these papers up here on this pulpit and this Bible and all this other stuff up here to come and minister to us today and that's no other than my great friend Reverend Christian so I want y'all to give it up for him I thank him y'all pray for him while he's standing body be a little bit frail but we're going to pray that you work this thing out for us this morning. Amen. Amen. Y'all all right? Amen. Oh, and I forgot to say his beautiful wife. Y'all give it up for Sister Christian. Don't you go running down there neither. Stay right here. We love her. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for allowing us to use your husband. You are so amazing. You know I love you. You know I do. Amen. Y'all give it up for Reverend Christian. Praise goes to the Lord. I want to give a little bologna sandwiches, but <laughs> it started out a few years ago. Um, I used to eat a lot of bologna. Uh, coming up as a kid, it was cheap. <laughs> Most cases, it's all you had. But anyway, I ate quite a bit of bologna. So about a year and a half ago, I, I weaned myself off of bologna. We used to j joke about it in, <laughs> in Sunday and Bible study. Here comes the lonely man. <laughs> but praise be the Lord. And uh, Pastor, I don't know who, who that man you were talking about. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> praise be to the Lord. Um, oh, God is wonderful. God is wonderful. God is wonderful. And I don't like to think of myself as old. I know I'm getting there. But I do think about John in his last days. Um, not the Bible, but history and tradition says that he got so old and frail till all he could say is just, God is enough. God is enough. And I pray that if I never live to see another day, I can say, God is enough. God is enough. Let us have a word of prayer, please. Father, you're wonderful. Even at times we don't know it, you're wonderful, Lord. Even at times, Lord, when we, when we stray, you're wonderful. Even at times, Lord, when we turn our backs on you and, and doubt you, Lord, your grace is there, you're wonderful, Lord. Help us, God, to continue to worship a God like you. Help us. Help us, Lord. Not just here in Pine Hill Community, but those on social media today and all other, Father, who are gathered today in your name. We pray that you'd use us, God. And I pray, Father, with my, with my inadequacies, that you see fit to allow your word to go forth. And it's in your name we pray and say amen and amen. And if you would stand, please, and open your Bibles to Isaiah, the sixth chapter. If you guys forgive me, I can't quite read a little bit here like the way I want to. Isaiah, the sixth chapter, starting with the very first verse. Isaiah, the sixth chapter. Are we all there? Amen. 
to the English Standard Version, and it reads, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I'm a man lost, for I'm a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. You may be seated. May the Lord grant a blessing to those who not only hear his word, but who work it out in their lives. In your name we pray and say amen. Amen. I would call this. I probably just go ahead and say, my dark side, your dark side, our dark side. Hmm. Okay. When the dark side of a Christian rears its ugly head, he or she will not take up the cross and follow. Why you ask? Because they fail to deny self and to present themselves a consistent living sacrifice unto God. And for you guys who know me, you know I'm not a traditional preacher. I'm barely a teacher, but I praise God for what I can do. I'd like to give you an illustration of um, roughly some 30 plus years ago. There was a couple with kids. And uh, one Sunday morning before Sunday school, they got in not a shouting match, not a spitting contest, but a little, little annoyance, a little, 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 dis- little disagreement over nothing. When I say nothing, I mean literally nothing. By the time they got to church, you know, man, you don't feel like worshiping behind that kind of stuff. Anyway. That went on for two or three weeks. And then finally, uh, my understanding is that that couple together finally realized what was going on. They had failed to deny themselves on a consistent basis and follow God. They had failed. But when they realized what they were doing, though, they quickly repented. Because they understood what was, what was happening. What was going on was that when they opened their mouths, even though there was no profane language, even though there was, there, was, there was no shade being thrown at anybody, still there was something coming out of their mouths that God didn't put his stamp of approval on. And, and, and if you don't know it by now, <laughs> Satan specializes in being able to hear that kind of stuff. In fact, he goes around looking for it, and he can tell. He may not know anything about us until we open our mouths. This little thing called that tongue, this little thing, it can be a blessing and a curse. What's unfortunate, though, is that it could be both at the same time, both. One speech, the tongue, coupled with the attitude and mindset, uh, they're nothing more than conduits by which our heart do their thing. In other words, our heart is the main thing. If our heart's not right, it's easy for the mind, it's easy for the rest of the body, especially this, to do its thing. 
So when I look at Isaiah, the sixth chapter, the first eight verses, I, I, I see something here. Isaiah, he's pretty close or was close to his king. I don't know what happened. I don't know if they were buddy buddies or if it was that Isaiah had an infatuation for the king. I don't know. But whatever it was, it hurt him when he died. Isaiah wasn't having a bad day. He was having a bad season. And then the boot, while in this temple, this, this building, I'm going to say it was a temple, he gets a vision of the Lord, and he sees the splendor of the Lord. He sees the seraphim, and he sees them in com they're, they're going back and forth with their holy, holy, holy. And then... I, I like the way Isaiah puts this. When he saw that, he saw the purity of God, the righteousness of God, the holiness of God. And if you got any type of, now, now understand me, Isaiah isn't no any old body. This is a prophet. This is somebody that's supposed to know the word. Not only know the word, should be, if, you, if I can say this, right next door to God almost in a secret. But Isaiah, being human and man just like you and me, his frailty says, he looks at himself. He looks at what his whole card has. Then he looks at the Lord. He looks back at his whole card. And all he can see is the purity of God. And he compares it to himself. He said, woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in a land with folk that got unclean lips. It's something about you who are called by his name. We all, now James says this in the first, first part of James' third chapter, all right? He said, let there not be many teachers, knowing that what? We shall receive the greater condemnation. It kind of falls in line with Luke, the 12th chapter, 48th verse. To him much is given, much is what? Required a call of them. Now, now Isaiah, like I said, he's a prophet. He's a prophet. But he realizes his shortcomings all of a sudden. And it should be that way with you and me. When we come into the presence of God, when we see God and we see him in his fullness and his holiness, we should look and see how close do I measure up. Do I look like him? Do, do I walk like him? Am I acting like him? And I, I said, unequivocally said, no, no, I'm not. And then Isaiah says, realizing what he has done, you know what Isaiah just did? He just went through a confession process coupled with a repentance process. And when he did that, you know what happened? The seraphim took up a hot tongue with the, from the, and got a coal from where it was sitting and touched his lips. Think about it. Think about this. Coal, coal in its place is hot. Your tongue is not designed for that thing to touch it. Your lips either. That hurt. That hurt. There's no kind of pain compared to what our Jesus did for you and me. So that we wouldn't have to have a hot coal put on our lips. Isaiah, man, when you see the splendor of the Lord, you should realize, as I've already said, there's no comparison. The Lord's pure and we are dirty. But he said, uh, not only is he dirty, but he dwells with folk who are dirty. And if we aren't careful as believers, we could be like, almost like that, that frog in a pot of water that's lukewarm. Slowly but sure, that, that, that pot is gradually being heated. 
the frog's body is able to acclimate to the increase in temperature to the point that it finally gets too hot and he can't get out. We are that way at times. We can hang around that which we shouldn't be hanging around. I like to call it the, the, the devil's fire. Thinking about Peter right now, okay? We're h- hanging around the devil's fire, and we kind of get warm. And after a while, we become comfortable where we are. We become comfortable when folks started telling bad jokes. We, we may not have liked it at first, but the more we hang around, the more we listen, the more we find ourselves subconsciously sliding on into it. Sliding on into it. Allowing ourselves to go where we shouldn't go. Allowing ourselves to say things we shouldn't say. Watch your company. We always tell our kids that. But we need to make sure that we do what? Practice it ourselves. That they see mama and daddy walking that way. They don't see mom and daddy like when I was coming out of people, and I seen it when I got to be adult. I see people drop their kids off at Sunday school at church, and they go on back home. But you got to set the tone. You got to set the example. They're looking up to you. They don't know. Some of them know right from wrong, but only they only know what you, you told them. So you got to walk it. You got to talk it. You got to emulate what you say to them. Whenever you and I, as believers, when we get a glimpse, a quick glimpse of God, it should be enough to drive us back to our spiritual senses. You know, really and truly, some of us kind of like, you know, kind of like wallowing in sin, okay, I- especially with our mouths. That's where Isaiah was. Until he truly met God, then and only then did he see his dark side. His mouth, tongue may have been profane. I don't know. I, I don't know. He could have been the cursed person. He could have been a lot of things. But whatever it was that dealt with his mouth, whatever it was, or it could be, maybe I should say, maybe he's like us. You know, they didn't have face. They didn't have, you know, YouTube back in the day, <laughs> computers, laptops, cell phones. But one thing they did have was a human nature. And if possible, most likely, his human nature was just like yours and just like mine. If not tamed, if not brought under control, it will have its way with us whenever it feels like it. Maybe that's why, no, I know, maybe it is. Maybe that's why Paul quoted or wrote in Romans 12, first two verses. I beseech you now, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourselves, what? A living sacrifice. One that's holy and acceptable so that you'd be able to do what? Carry on your reasonable service, a reasonable worship for God. Now, his audience understood what a dead sacrifice was. Even though that church was basically basically Gentiles, they understood in that day that there were still such things going on as a living sacrifice. Uh, I know the, the Jewish part of the church got that. Because back in the old day in the ceremonial law, what would happen? God's folk would have to offer up a sacrifice, one that's pure, pure, could be a dove, kid, animal, couldn't be that little gimpy one, or the one got three feet, three legs rather, or the one got one, I know, no, it had to be a perfect one, and you offered that up as a sacrifice to God, and what we mean by that is this, its throat had to be cut, blood had to be shed. Then the meat was cooked. The family got some of it. High priest got the rest. And supposedly the Lord consumed the rest. That was that had to go on year after year. Now, what Paul is telling his audience is this. I don't want you to be a dead sacrifice. I want you to be a living one. I want you to live for God. In order to do so, you got to do something that Matthew says, if any man wish to follow me, let him do what? Deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. And that's not always an easy job. Think about where you just came from. Think about who you used to run with. 
Think about all that fun you had when you was out there. Satan ain't about to get you up that easy. No, he going to fight for this. He said, boy, this is my house. <laughs> That's what he's saying. But God said, no, 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 you're mine. And I'm going to give you something to prove that you are mine. I'm going to put my seal on you. My Holy Spirit will dwell in you. And from this moment on, it will be a seal. It will be a keeper until such time I come as king. And you are to allow him to lead you and guide you. Don't quench him. Don't, 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 You know what grieving is? See, God's Holy Spirit is a gentleman and a friend. He doesn't force you to do anything, but he will lead you along the right way. He will give your mind the, 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 the thought that it should have or the thoughts it should have. He will lead you the way you should go, but it's left up to you to follow. And when you don't go, it grieves him. In a way, you can probably say it's like he's crying. He's like, oh, what am I going to do with him? That Johnny Fisher, I don't know. Uh, uh, uh. Don't grieve him. Allow him to have his way with you. Why? We should be thankful. This is something I see about us. Think about this. We have a tendency of doing things that we want to do. We throw shade at other people when we feel like it. E even some of us as believers, may you be here somewhere else. I got no one particular person in mind. If anybody, let, let me share, you, share this with you. Whatever I got written here, odds of, odds of good, the majority of it are in that book. So I've seen both sides of that thing. One side I didn't like, and I don't want to go back that side and look. But I gotta carry notes around these days. But also, we have a tendency when things don't go right, we blame other folk. Eh, it wasn't my dad and my mama. I could have done this and that. Wonder for my teacher giving me that C plus when she knew I deserved to be. I could have I could have been on the scholar scholar list. What for my boyfriend and girlfriend, me having to, 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 to take care of them, I, I could I could be farther along socially and economically. We'll find something. Instead of taking a close inventory and look at ourselves the way Isaiah did, we will blame other folk. Hmm. But you know what we should do in all things, give God thanks. No, Lord. I don't have a new car, but I got a hoopty. I thank you for it. No, Lord, I don't have steaks every week, but I can eat some bologna sandwiches. <laughs> you, you get it? Thank God for what you got. Thank God for what you got. Now, he, he, he's not saying, I thank God for what, you go, what you're going through. He's saying I, you are to thank God even though you are in what you are in, you thank him anyway. Why? Because he's going to be the one that's going to sustain you while you're going through whatever it might be. Now, that reminds me, some 30 plus years ago, I met a guy named Mbumi. He's from Nigeria, and his wife's name was Martha. I've told the story before in Bible study at some point in time. Martha and Mbumi came over to the United States, and he was going to a Reformed Theological Seminary. And I recall the pastor um, that I was involved with at the time. We were starting the church. He had Mbumi staying with him. Now, the pastor had a basic house, four-bedroom, two baths, two-car garage, a little wash closet for the washer and the dryer. And I don't know why I did this, but I said, Mbumi, what do you think about America? And in his accent, 
of Nigeria and whatever it is. I don't know if, if he spoke too Swahili or what. He says, you Americans are fat. You're fat. He said, I'm not fat. No, 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 no. You don't get it. You're fat. Back home, where I am from, the river supplies virtually everything we need. We do our business in the river. We wash our clothes in the river. We got to drink water out of the river. And we got to pray to God that he makes sure that there's enough water to come down to fill the river. Over here, look at you. You got conveniences. And, he, and this, this is what, out of all that he said, this is what caught my attention. And you do not seem to be appreciative of what God has done for you. You Americans, you're fat. You're fat. I wanted to go somewhere and cry. I saw God. And I saw something I'd never seen before. My unthankfulness, my ungratefulness. My, I was not gracious. I wasn't full of gratitude. And I thank God for allowing me to meet him, Bumi, in the Swan Samarco. All of that said to say this. We grieve and we quench the Holy Spirit. I've already mentioned Ephesians 4, 1 Thessalonians 5, 19, I believe it is. How so, you say? When we use our tongue to say what is contrary to what he may want us to say in a given situation. We use our own way of thinking instead of following God's leadership. And God's leadership is simple. Y'all know it. Proverbs 3, 4, and 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he'll direct your path or make your path straight. Now, what I'm saying is this. We all know that. We, we can recite it. But when the, it hit the fan, where are we? Somebody, somebody hit you. First thing come to your mind, tit, tit, tit for that. Hit me, I'm going to hit you back. Yet, you forget about the word that says, God says, I am the one that will seek revenge. It is mine. I will repay. You just follow me. You just allow me to do the heavy lifting. Allow me to do what I do best, and that is take care of you. See, we, we want to step in. God, I think I can handle this one. Okay, yeah, yeah, th this, this one's good. This is just a little Band-Aid scratch. Yeah, this one's okay. No, 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 no. He said, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge means you follow, you obey, you do what you do know is right to do. Now, this is ABC stuff I'm talking. Unfortunately, you know what? Many of us Christians need to go back and learn the ABCs. ABCs, alphabets, they make up words. Then words make up what? Synthesis. Then synthesis makes up paragraphs. Paragraphs makes up a story. A story can make up a book. And then a book can make up volumes and volumes. You see how we go? We are still down, a lot of us, in ABCs. We aren't moving as we ought or as God would like for us to move. And when I say move, I'm talking about being spiritually mature. Oh, oh, listen, listen. We, we all stumble in, 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 in some way. James said that in, 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 in 3, 1, 3, 2, I believe. He said we all stumble. We all have stepped in some way. But that does not excuse us now from being a teacher. That does not excuse us from being whatever God wants us to be. We got to be mindful. We got to be mindful of what the rules are. We got to understand what's going on here. He uses cracked pots. But what, what Isaiah and, and what I'm trying to get across more so is this. Folk who, yeah, we all stumble. But folk whose lifestyle is consistently antagonistic, consistently going against that of God, their lifestyle does not portray a risen Jesus Christ. Yet they say they're Christians. They may well be. It is quite possible many will be in heaven, and you know what's going to happen? They made it in. Might not be a whole bunch of rewards. Might be a 
some smoke around them, as the scripture <laughs> says. But, but the gist is this. We should not be consistently walking opposite of the way God wants us to go. We should not be doing that. That should not be our lifestyle. That should not be once named among the believers. But unfortunately, it is. I'm a living example of it. I've been there, and I know what it's like. But it's not, it's not good. But thanks be to God for his grace and mercy. He gives seconds and thirds and fourths and fifths. He peels you up out of the dirt and knocks the dust off of you. And says, let's go at it again. Come on, come on, let's go back at it again. Man, he has a way of encouraging us, and we can't always see it. He said, I'll never forleave, leave you nor forsaken you. You're mine. You're mine. Whether you mess up or not, you're mine. Sometimes I got to change your stinky, smelly diaper. Woo, you're mine. You're mine. Sometimes I got a lullaby you to sleep over nonsense, but you're mine. I'm going to be right there for you. How could you not want to love and obey a God like that? How? How? Let's pray. As I come to close. To roll with God is to do things his way. Romans 12, 1. 12, 2. I beseech you now, brethren, as I said, by the mercies of God, present yourself a living sacrifice, one that's holy and acceptable unto the Lord. Now, the word beseech, which is the Greek word, uh, I, I won't go into all of that with you. It does not mean Paul is asking. The word is stronger than ask. It is a command. And it means, I'm urging you. In, in fact, he can go to the, to, and say, I appeal to you. I beg you to do this. To do this. Allow yourself on a daily basis to be to be a living sacrifice for God. Somebody going to say something to you that you ain't going to like. Somebody going to call you a name you ain't going to like. Somebody going to mess with your mom and your family. You ain't going to like it. But he says, I want you to be a living sacrifice for me. And when you are a living sacrifice to God, it's amazing how bright your light will shine. It's amazing what kind of salt you're going to be for the earth and for the people in it. It's a man to allow oneself to be a sacrifice, not merely a dead one, but one that lives or is alive, and life to, is to be surrendered by that Christian to God, and such can only take place when there's been a change of the mind and heart. When the mind and heart is under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, then the body, especially this thing here called your tongue, is, a better, is in a better position to follow suit. Keep in mind that the tongue, when, al when allowed, can go way down deep into the bottom of the well of the heart. And if the heart ain't got the good stuff in it, that, that, that tongue's going to go way down, and it's going to scrub and scrape and dip and pull up all that mess out of the bottom of that well. Backbiting. Throwing somebody under the bus. Throwing shade at somebody. Hating somebody. Being indifferent, not loving your brother the same way God has loved you. All of that mess is going to come up, and it's going to display out of your mouth what is in the heart. That should not be with believers. That should not be with believers. I met a brother this time almost a year ago. His name is Hooper. Met him at a post office in Longwood. And it was interesting. He was unemployed, and, and, and immediately... I just knew it was something special about him. He was a believer. And, and, and we, every now and then, we talk. We, we, we talk about one another. We pray. And recently, the last three months, Will has texted me that a good friend of his named Simone, her father was dying. And I asked him, did I pray? Not only did I pray, I had other prayer warriors, too. The father did pass. God lived. But then he went on to tell me that Simone now had an incurable disease. And he prayed for me a couple of days ago that she had gone on home to be with the Lord. And he sent me a beautiful picture of her 
she's she's wading in the water and she's looking over the waves and it's a beautiful picture man and 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 the the sun is right there at a right angle and it 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 almost looks like she's she's walking up king's highway if there's such a thing well that was beautiful but the point i want to make is this i don't know him he didn't know me but we had a kindred spirit and the brother consistently said, I'm praying for you, John. I'm praying for you. At times I send him some Bible study material. He said, man, this stuff looks good. Keep it up. Keep it up. Saints need to encourage one another. And, and you know what? Saints need to love one another. Even though at times the person you, you, you should be loving, you know, they ain't smelling too good. And when I say ain't smelling too good, they ain't acting right. So keep this in mind. You weren't acting right either when God met you. Out of his own good pleasure, there was nothing you could do to say, you know what, God? <laughs> I like this one. I sing in the choir, man. Listen to my voice. Nope. I'm a good preacher. Nope. I can do this. Nope. Nothing we could do to move the needle one iota to make him think about us. It was out of his own good pleasure. And when we realize that and take that under consideration, that should be enough right there. If he loved me enough to do that, why can't I at least love a brother? Yeah, the brother might be ugly. He may be bad. He may be, and I may have to love him from a distance. But still, I'm going to love him or her. And I'm going to be on my knees for him loving me. Not praying, Lord, I wish you give him or her out of my face. Lord, I wish you go ahead and take. No, 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 no. No, that's not the essence of prayer. That's not the essence of prayer. One may have to address another, and this is another thing here, in a disciplinary way, and when such takes place, it doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be rough and nasty. Sometimes you, you got you to gotta deal with some, rough, some, 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 some tough situations, but you ain't got to add no more hot sauce and Tabasco on it. Just go ahead and bring some salt and some good seasoning, all right? So when you do talk to them, at least they could feel he, he or she loves me. Even though they're tanning my hide, they love me. They love me. You could see a wee bit of, you know, the way it, that way it can go down easier. Yes, you need to handle the situation, the issue, whatever it might be. But do so in a spirit of love, keeping in mind that you got to deal with the truth. You got to deal with it. But we are not. We are not to tear down, but to build and edify. It may be, you know, think about Galatians 6.1 now. If any man be overtaken in a fault, he who is what? Spiritual, have to do what? Restore what? Him in what? A spirit of meekness, lest what? You also be tempted. Maybe, just maybe, many of us need to get off for a minute. Get off the phone. Stay away from social media. Some of us don't communicate very well as Christians. Some of us say some of the darndest things I, I, you know, on Facebook and emails and other stuff. Be, you know, maybe, it, don't let nobody know you're a Christian. Please don't. That, that's, that's bad. That's not a very good witness. Just, just get off of it until you can get allow God to, to get you back to where you should be. There are times we may be well-meaning in what we do, but lack the ability to communicate truth and love with a soft touch and a soft hand. Keeping it 100 now. We all screw up, like I said, in James, the, the early in the, in the third chapter. But we are referring to those who are consistently, as I said earlier, rolling contrary to God's way of handling things. When we do so, our speech hurts others. We bring a bad mark to the name of the Lord. And there's a flicker in our spiritual light that we say should be shining. That's bad. That's not good. That's not good. We have offended, if you have offended someone, Matthew tells us, fifth chapter I believe it is, 
you need to go to that individual and get it right, or at least make an attempt to get it right. I had a situation that happened here with me two, three years ago. All right, I'm there at church, right, right, right after, right before service. Uh, I was accused of showing partiality to an individual, and I left this particular person to run over to another. So the brother told me, and I told him I'm so sorry. But not only that, when service is over, I went and got two witnesses. We went over, and I found the brother. I said, brother, if I've done anything to hurt you, anything to harm you, I say, I don't know, but I'm sorry. Please forgive me. It wasn't intentional, and if I did, it was one of my best things to do. We text one another back and forth with, with scripture and, 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 and greetings every day almost. Now, I could have gone on and speak some more. And who knows what might have happened. Me being in the ministry, and, and, I, and if he's thinking I'm that way, he's going to bad mouth me. Not only is he going to bad mouth me, it's going to be a black eye on Pine Hills too. Because trust me, man, he's going to, you know, he and me, he's going to get it out there. So we got to be careful what we do. And I want to conclude with this. Um, I heard this, and I, I I checked to go to see if indeed it was true. And yes, it is. Uh, where I live, we have sand cranes. They're quite prominent in uh, Seminole County. If you haven't seen any yet, Pastor, keep looking and knocking on that crane. You'll see some. And and they they they're slow walking. Real slow. And you got to wait and let them go across. They're an endangered species, this I believe. And they make a funny bunny sound. <laughs> no, man. Hi. But, you know, we've been there 30 years. We're used to it now. But in a place called Turkey Mountain, in This particular bird, when it flies, it has a funny bunny sound. And as it's flying, it makes this funny bunny sound. <coughs> All over the place. But what it didn't know, it's attracting eagles. And eagles love cranes. They hear that sound, they say, uh oh. Breakfast somewhere, dinner somewhere, oh, lunch, oh, boy. Oh, yeah. They love cranes. Now, let me tell you what happened. The cranes figured it out. When the cranes take flight, or before they take flight, they grab a rock, and they put it in their mouth. And they grab another rock and put it in their baby's mouth. So when they fly, it's not like, oh, hello, oh, hello, oh, hello. No, no, you go, oh, 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 oh. The eagles can't hear that. They can't. And what I'm trying to say is this. They realize that it's danger if they quark and open their mouth too much because the eagles are going to figure it out and find them and have themselves a nice dinner. You and me. Mm. Mm. Yeah. This couple I told you about that argued. Some 30 years ago, roughly. They finally figured it out. It was their tongue that was being used to do something that was contrary to the word of God. The tongue was doing something that wasn't edifying God, wasn't lifting him up. And, and, w and when they that couple figured it out, they repented. They said, we know what's going on with this. They ain't nothing but Satan. And what he's trying to do, for if we keep our mouth closed, he wouldn't know nothing about, you know. Satan doesn't know everything there is to know about us because he knows a lot. And when we open our mouths, we, we tell him a lot, too. Oh, man, no, 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 don't try her, man. Don't try her. No. They open their mouths. All I hear is praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. No, 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 no. But the rest of us, I remember that. Man, we, we throw it out there. Like I said, the shade. Throw somebody under the bus. 
We, 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 we hate on folks. We do this. We do that. Oh, man. Hey, I can see Satan right now. Hey, hey, Charlie. Yeah. Okay. About two blocks away from where you're at right now. There's a couple. Yeah. They're arguing right now. Get on over there, man. I need you to stir this one up good. Yeah, they're Christians. We may not be able to, no, we, we may not be able to take their salvation, but we can sure wreak havoc in their lives. Let me tell you the truth that with my wife on. Why the Christian is good. We learn. As long as we run around here like those, like those cranes. <laughs> so they knew where we were coming from because we opened our mouths and all that stuff at the bottom of our hearts was coming on up. Ah, yeah. I, I may not be able to do, do too much damage with them, but I'm going to wreak havoc in their lives. I'm going to make sure that they, they, don't, they don't have much of a flicker in their life. And that's what Satan is doing. And he loves doing that kind of stuff. Keep that in mind, please. Put a muzzle on it. What we did, what my wife and I did, we got a rock spiritually and figuratively speaking. And we allowed the Holy Spirit to deal with that thing. And we allowed him to deal with it. Guess what? It was like putting a muzzle on our mouths. That kind of crap didn't come out of our mouths anymore because our tongue wasn't going, it went way down into the barrel. It wasn't bringing that kind of mess up anymore. And that's how we should be as saints, holy and acceptable unto God. Yeah, we're going to stumble. Yeah, we're going to blow it. But the moment you do it, you know what you need to do? God, forgive me. Forgive me, God. And he's true to his word to do just that. Praise be to you, Lord. How many of us here today? We're quacking like those cranes, and we don't probably realize it. I ain't going to, blah, 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 blah. I'm fed up with this stuff. Blah, 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 blah. You take your baby. Girl, I told you, don't bring your baby over here. I'm, yeah, I'm your mama, but I ain't the baby mama. You take that. I, I'm just showing you where we are. When we go in the bottom of that barrel, and God hadn't filled it up with the right stuff. Well, he wants to. It's just that we won't let him in many instances. Yeah, we're saved. But it didn't work. He specializes in crack pipes. He specializes in, in, in urban renewal. He, spe he specializes in spiritual renewal. He specializes in lifting up the downtrodden. He specializes in those who have had their backs turned on. He specializes in all of that. And if that's any of you, he specializes in that. When you got caught up into something you shouldn't have gotten caught up into, when you got into drugs, when you got into alcohol, when you started selling your body, when you started doing this or doing that, he's saying, come on, just as you are. I love you. Come on. Come on. I accept you just as you are. But he said, I love you too much to let you stay that way. Is there anybody today, anybody today have not accepted Christ as Savior? Or maybe you have, but your life has done one of those U-turns. And you've gone somewhere you shouldn't have gone. You're doing things you shouldn't do. God says, I specialize in that. I am the specialist. There's no other specialist. There's nobody can do it the way I do. I can do it. I can take your broken heart and make it new. I can take the life that you're living, it, though it's bad, and still use you. You're mine. And when you're mine, I'm going to give you a witness on your lips, a testimony in your life that you're going to be able to share with others who you are and whose you are. Amen? Amen. Pastor, praise be the Lord, sir. Come on, y'all can do better than that. That was a word, man. Come on, y'all stand to your feet and give it up for real, man. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We thank you for that. Is there one today that you said, man, he was speaking right to me? And you're not saved. We take out this special moment in our services to offer salvation unto you. It's not about us. It's about our Lord and Savior covering you. You have an, um, an eternal home after this. All heads are bowed. 
And here's what I want you to pray for, church. I want you to pray for the souls that's not in here. Because maybe there might not be somebody sitting in here. Maybe there may be somebody online. But I believe that we should be about touching lives, transforming lives. And most importantly, people being drawn to Jesus, that the hearts may change and let the Lord be the Savior of their lives. If you got a loved one, if you got a nephew, if you got a son, if you got a daughter, if you got a neighbor, if you got a friend, if you got a coworker, pray now for that they may be drawn unto God. We thank you, Father God, for those that may not be in here or those that's in here now that, God, they're wrestling with salvation. Because in their mind, they either think they got to be perfect or they don't know what they're getting involved in. Maybe they've been taught wrong about salvation. Our prayer is that, God, you go meet them where they are. Use me in love to speak to them, to make sure, just to ask the question, if you were to leave here today, do you know where you're going? God, touch those. Touch the hearts of your people. God, that word that went forth today, I pray that you touch those who struggle with putting a rock in their mouth. I pray, I pray for those, God, I pray for me included. Father God, just to touch my tongue. Touch my heart. Help me to watch what I say. Help us to watch what we do. You told us to be a living, living sacrifice, which means if we're a living sacrifice, we are on display. We are an example in the earth showing what a living sacrifice looks like. So, God, we make ourselves ready and get ourselves prepared because somebody's going to try us. Somebody's going to say something rude. Somebody's going to do something nasty. But, God, vengeance is yours, saith the Lord. So, God, thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for giving us a word today to remind us we are here to do your work. We are here to align our character with you, God. We are part of the body of Christ, and we want to make sure you're happy. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may have your seats. Listen, we're getting up out of here. If you are not a part of uh, Pine Hills Community Church and you want to be connected, I am um, asking you, get connected. Um, if you're courting us, you've been courting us for a minute, make a decision and say, hey, you know what, Pastor? I want to... Uh, come up and I want to connect with the church. I want to help out and I want to get involved. Um, I like what's going on here. I see that I can be of some help. Um, or maybe you might say, you know what? I just want to, I've been serving at Mother Church and I've been looking for a church and I just want to sit. That's fine too. That's fine too. But we want you to get a part of a local church. I don't care what the world is saying. It is good for us to be a part of a local assembly so that you can help make change in the earth. We want to push God's mission. We want to push his mission, and we want to go and uh, make disciples, and you can help us be a part of that. So if you want to and you're, uh, you say, Pastor, I don't want to get up in front of nobody, come see me. You can holler at me anytime. Amen? Amen. Let's get ready to give. Let's get ready to give our offering. Amen. Amen. Let's get ready to give our offering. I know a couple of you in here about to give millions. Amen. Amen. Somebody come on, declare it. Yeah, it's mine. Amen. 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 So the, 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 the ladies are coming around, and they're giving. Don't our ladies look nice, our ushers? Amen. Y'all give it up for them. Amen. Amen. Remember, remember Wings of Faith this Thursday. This Thursday at a, at a um, 11 a.m. 11 a.m. this Thursday. 
all right? Also, for my fellas and for my sisters, remember on Saturdays we have brotherhood, sisterhood. Um, Reverend Kute, can you raise your hand? Can you raise your hand, Reverend Kute? Reverend Kute is over there. Fellas, you're asking to join on brotherhood. This is a time where you can ask questions um, in a Bible study uh, that they have. They speak on different topics. And so I, I, I beseech you, I, be, I beg you to join in on brotherhood. Also to our ladies, um, things are going on. Join in on sisterhood as well on Saturday morning. You can see Dr. Fleetland for that. I believe brotherhood starts at 830 and I believe sisterhood starts at 930. Amen. Amen. So join in. Let's stretch our hand toward the offering. Lord, thank you for the seed that have been sown. We pray that it be used for the edifying of your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Amen. Good to see all of you. Amen. Good to see all of you. Thank you so much for coming on today. Amen. And keep our sick and shut in in prayer. Make sure you get connected, get involved. Amen. With what's going on here at PHCC. If you can help me, I'm looking for even some of our elderly. If you can come and sign up on that list to be with us at Molly Ray Elementary School. We want to work on showing <coughs> our community uh, that we are a multi-generational church. We're just not uh, if, if people think that it's just full of seniors and no, we want to be multi-generational getting in young families as well. All right. So we want you to come out, help support us in those efforts. Amen. All right. Let's get up out of here. Those who are watching us online. Thank you so much for joining us. You are family. We love you. Appreciate you till next time. Shalom and peace. Reverend Christian, you're going to join us out here. Thank you so much guys for coming on.